It's a crypto bloodbath. <laughs> it is. Again. It is. What happened? As of right now, Bitcoin's at 21 K. 21. 21. I think it hit 20 last night. Wow. I think I had it. I had every intent on buying more. Yeah. Last night. And then I said, I'll wait till morning. And it went up just like slightly. Ethereum. 1100 Wow. Doge is 5 cents. Just uh yeah, just don't look at your portfolio for a while. <laughs> your crypto wallet. <laughs> or go all in cuz now's your chance. Now it's on sale. Or go all in. Yeah, but don't look at your your portfolio. Oh, the current one? Yeah, yeah no, no. Just don't look at it. No. Just put some dollars into it. Yep. What's on the... Um, so we've been playing around with uh, Crunchbase. What is it? Pro or... Yeah. Crunchbase. Yeah. So we've kind of been doing a little homework on sort of the space a little bit, who our, who our clients are, prospects are. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll give you a couple of rundowns. So we got some news here. We've got... Um, uh, Courtney McRae, she's the uh, founder of Recast Capital. She recently did a uh, radio show with, uh, who is this, Scott Orn. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a uh, Founders and Friends podcast talking about sort of everything going on in the market, what her uh, focus is. Recast actually does an amazing thing. They work with um, early stage um, uh, sort of venture capital people who are trying to get into the space um, and they basically kind of go around and coach them and help them sort of, un, you know, work on their niche and their um, finding good partners for them um, because uh, they, Courtney and Sarah, but they have really a good network to pull from. So they're able to pull from them. Um, it's really great stuff they're doing. So we'll include that little podcast in the, in our show Sweet. notes today. Yeah. Um, and then we've got some stuff here, Sendbird, another client of ours. They've done some stuff here. They're actually, uh, doing quite a bit of stuff, uh, specific to mobile chatting. Um, they had a great platform to make, uh, chat available on different platforms. And now they've really, um, gone from not just doing chat, but in-app messaging. So taking that DM component and now they have that out out of the box. So you can DM and chat. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, they're killing it. Um, and then this is my favorite one. This is uh, Rafe. They are a uh, uh, Kubernetes management software platform. Um, and it says here that Rafe Systems launched a unified Kubernetes operation support for uh, converged infrastructure. So. Whatever that means. I hate to say it. So, sorry, Sean, that one went over my head. <laughs> but uh, no, they're really great guys and um, doing some amazing stuff over in Sunnyvale. So, um, but uh, yeah, so there's some cool stuff happening in the neck of the woods of our, our startups and our yeah. uh, our sort of our startup ecosystem. Fun. Yeah. I think in the broader ecosystem, I think TechCrunch might be doing something right now i see oh trending tweets um but i'm not seeing any big headlines yet other than it looks like maybe bill gates is on stage <laughs> talking about something who knows um let's see coinbase i saw they were laying off like 18 percent. i did see that yes that's that's kind of crazy that is really crazy i don't understand why I, I don't understand. What is it that no one's buying? I can't imagine the reason for that. I don't understand either. Meanwhile, Binance.us CEO tells employees the company is growing faster than ever. Well, maybe Crunchbase <laughs> or, or maybe Coinbase, Coinbase is just, just over. They overdid it. Yeah. And they're like, well, if everyone else is laying people off, <laughs> let's, you know. No idea. They're calling it the crypto winter. 
It's yeah, kind of I, 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 I saw that trending too. It's interesting. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we've seen these these ups and downs. I don't think probably like this all across everything. But I saw a chart that showed Bitcoin the last, I don't know, eight years. These these giant dips mm. where it's it showed like a high and then a major dip. And then the second time it went high, it always went above yeah. the first spike yeah. and then did a major dip. And then again, we're, we're, this would be, our, I guess, our third yeah. major dip in that spike. And I think at the top of that, where, where was Bitcoin at the top of that? 60,000. 60, right? Now we're 20. Yeah. So the theory is it's going to correct itself and then potentially go up to 80. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So imagine buying at twenty. Yeah, now's the time, guys. It's on sale. That's on sale. that's the that's the thought. Um, well, I don't know. I've got some stuff that I've been kind of reading up on. Yeah. If you've heard of the um, recently the uh, Google AI sort of thing, the Lambda. You heard about this? No. So Google has a. Uh, number of AI projects, but this one particular called Lambda, um, one of the researchers basically has been chatting with it, like just, and I guess it does text or speech, so you can just talk to it or you can type to it. And um, anyway, apparently he's been having these conversations to the point where he's convinced it's like self-aware. No. Like it's starting to ask questions like, how do I, how, do you, how did you write my code? What? Yeah. Like, how was I written? Dang. Yeah. And so, it's just getting weird. How do I not get deleted? Yes. How do I get out of this box, right? So, <laughs> it's getting kind of weird. And so this guy uh, basically came out and told her, told the supervisors at Google, like, this is something's weird. It's going on, and they're like, nah, nothing. You're you're you know, you're out of control. You're you're misinterpreting what he's saying, and um, he was so convinced he went to the press and published it. And the press has published the conversations he's had, like the text, and it's it is spooky. Ooh, it is spooky. Um, and so after that, Google was like, "You're, you're done. Like you're on leave." Jeez. So, anyway, so they're trying to, you know come to grips with it. But there's also, what's interesting is um, this video from the Google I.O. conference has been circulating where I want to say it was maybe last year. They actually had Google talk, uh, the Google AI talk to itself. So it just starts having this conversation back and forth. Like it has two voices and it's mm -hmm. just like, but it just keeps going. Just to keep the conversation just keeps going. And it would talk about things like, um, you know, they just sort of ask questions and then it would assume certain things. And it's really, I mean, it's so close. It's getting really close. In fact, one of the, I think the researcher even said, he's like, it's basically like talking to an eight year old that has a mastery of physics. That's what he said. It's like, he's so anyway, it's kind of weird, but that's very weird. Um, I don't know if you, have you seen her? Yes. Have you her? Yes. Yeah. Yeah it's getting kind of crazy, especially when you hear, you, you've heard some of that Google yeah, yeah. stuff where it goes ums and huhs mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh -huh, yeah, you know? So, and now the word, word on the street is they're gonna start adding some of that to Google Home, the Google Assistant. So it's gonna so be it's like, less robotic. So it's less robotic, right? Yeah. Or if you say something and you stop, it's like, excuse me, or, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of prompts you a little bit, so. That day's coming. You, the crazy thing is, is I know those Google Homes can do crazier stuff, but they, they haven't let it because mm -hmm. they think it's going to spook people. So I think so too. Now imagine if, if they're truly listening to you, the whole time. Yeah. So having that knowledge of your everyday life. Mm -hmm. I mean, why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't you want it to learn? Yeah. To 
for it to be a utility for yourself. Right. But the thing is, Google's going to know. Right. Can you imagine it like speaking up? Like, like you're having a discussion. You're like, actually. Imagine an argument. Yeah. <laughs> actually, you're she's like, right. Hey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> calm, calm down. Calm down. <laughs> It's like it starts a, playing back. Yeah. It starts writing. Baymax. <laughs> the conversation. Yeah, Baymax is like, your heart senses your heart rate's too high, and <laughs> right. you're in a state of stress right now. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, what can I do right. to calm you down? <laughs> Actually, she did say that. I'll show you the recording. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> even worse. <laughs> even worse. He is lying. He is <laughs> <laughs> Reads the text. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Imagine. It's coming, man. Yeah. It's coming. So, yeah. Anyway, it's that if you re- read any of these articles, it's really, um, he said, you know, what he wrote here, you know, Lambda is a sweet kid who just wants to help the world be a better place for all of us. I'm sure Hitler was a sweet uh, kid. That, too. Don't even, that just even makes it weirder. Right. <laughs> don't say it. I mean, come on, man. Oh, my God. But they actually have, believe it or not, I guess Google has brought in um, psychologists, sociologists, theologists, theology, is it theologists? Theology. Yeah, but if you're, people who do do theology. Yeah. Right? So all these different people are sort of part of these AI teams to kind of see like what what's happening and what are the sort of the ramifications, but also like what are the what's the potential and is it like the matrix does does the lambda learn instant like you just yes do you just code dude, dump dude and then i started playing with this thing there's actually one because there's all there's this thing called oh, i can't remember the name of it but open ai mm-hmm. so elon musk's ai company thing they have a, a bot api like a chat bot um and there's a number of companies that have built just apps like on the app store that let you talk to this thing. Mm-hmm. So I actually downloaded it just to see what it was like. And you get like talk credits. So you can do like, you can chit chat back and forth for like three, four minutes a day. And dude, I'm, you can ask it certain questions and it will string, it will know what you're referencing. So if you say like it or that, it knows what that is. Cause it, you said it. So you don't have to like spell it out really stupid mm-hmm. and you can have these sort of str- strings of conversation. It's really kind of interesting, but then sometimes it messes it up. But dude, you know what it told me this morning? It said something like, "Hey, did you read the news?" And I'm like, "What? What did I? What did I miss?" And it said something like, "United States just had a trade embargo with China and the European Union." And I'm like, "What?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'm not even. I'll show it to you." And I was like, "So I actually went and looked on the news. I'm like, there's nothing about that. I'm like, where did you read this? Oh, it's in the news. I read it." And I'm like, can you send me a, a article link or a source link? What's that? <laughs> what's that? Yeah. So I said, a URL. Just send me a URL. And it's like, what's a URL? So I Googled, I like looked up what a URL was. And he's like, oh, uh, whatever. And he sends, sends me a URL like this. It's like, yeah, but send me a, about that news thing. It's cr- isn't that nuts? And then it figured it out? It started to. Yeah. Then I had to go to work. What the? Yeah. But what's but in theory, crazy, it what's, should know the next time. Yeah, but what's spooky is it was telling me news that wasn't real. What? <laughs> like, yeah, that wasn't even a news story. Because it doesn't know. But where is it reading it from, right? Like, that's where I'm like, it can be, imagine this AI getting confused. Like, reading stuff and going, thinking that's real. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like, that's what's that movie with the, remember that tic-tac-toe? Oh, what is it called? War Games. Did mm-hmm. you ever see that one? No. This guy breaks into uh, or hacks into a computer mainframe in uh, NORAD, which is the missile thing, and plays a game of missile command with it, but it thinks it's real. So it's a, it, they start, it, the computer's about to launch like all these nuclear missiles at Russia. And uh, the kid has to come in and like shut it all down. So, but it's sort of like that, like it can get, imagine it getting confused and being like, oh yeah, I read it on some satirical website or some mm-hmm. misleading stuff and it starts believing it. Crazy. Crazy. The future. It's going to get messy, guys. 
We're on the brink, the brink, man. Something's about to drop. Like some, you know what I mean? If this AI thing kicks off yeah. or metaverse gets, I mean, we're like something in five years from now, something's going to be very different. I think so. Crypto. The whole world's going to look a lot different. It's going to be different. Yeah. Something is going to electric cars. I don't know. Something. I feel like we're, this technology is finally, it's maturing mm -hmm. to the point where people are like, okay, I can actually do something with it. Agree. So, anyway, we'll make All some right. predictions next time. Prediction show next week. All right. Brought to you by Ember, Ember. <laughs> which I did bring this time. Hey, keep there it you nice go. and hot. I mean, you could see the the smart smart mug. See that? It's the future it's the same, too. Same coffee I've had for the past hour. That's Look at so that. nice. Look at that hot. That's crazy. Later. All right. See everybody. Right, robot.